his dismissal and being declared persona non grata. So I'll give you the chance to perhaps add on, on what he said, your views on that, as well as what Professor Kagwanja had to say. Many African scholars asking for the relevance of the UN mission in Somalia. What Ambassador Hazel failed to know, to acknowledge is, you know, there now there is a, there is a, what you call, there is a, there is a scramble in Somalia today. You know, the, the issue of the global war on terror now is no longer exist. People now, it's a new, what they call, economic and political threat. So that's exactly what he failed to understand is, the issue of the, what they call, global on terror is no longer exist in Somalia. For the last two years, now there is a policy shift from that issue to the more economic and political th threat between maybe U.S. and China as well, between this, even this, within the Somali groups. If you look at uh, the election of the southwest state of Somalia, that signifies the government of Somalia that are trying to install a friendly regional administrators so that the 2020, the election 2020, they can easily seek the second term. And also, who's pushing the Somali government? There's a battleground in East Africa, you know, uh, 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 Gulf African states within Somalia. The Saudis and Emirates on one side, the Qataris and Turkey on another, on another side. For my general administration, in fact, the Qataris and Turkey are pushing for to have a second time. In order to get that, he, must, he, must, he has to make sure the friendly regional state must be installed. Today, as we speak, there's an election in Buntelab, mm -hmm. whereby yes. the bro government, the guy now, he won the election. Mm -hmm. uh, say, say Didi. Again, this guy called Abdaziz Loftagren is also installed by the southwest state of Somalia. Very soon, the issue of the Buntelab will be the history, whereby the, the Ahmed Mudobe will be the, you know, his days are numbered. That's exactly the people, the people are eyeing in 2020. So the ambassador Hassan, he failed to understand what they call the, you know, the conflict of interest mm -hmm. among the Somali groups. He failed to understand the influence of the, what they call the China and the Mati and uh, the USA and, uh, and, the and, and, and EU and, um, uh, you know, what they call the, the Saudis on one side and Turkey and Qatar on another, another side. Somalia became a battleground. In fact, when the Cold War ended, yeah. now there's, there's a new Cold War now. It's, it's taking place in Somalia. The issue of the terror is no longer exist anymore. That's why when the Abiy Ahmed came to power in, in what the, uh, you know, in, as a prime minister in Ethiopia, uh, Ethiopia is one of the you know, superpowers in, in the region. Whatever happened in Ethiopia can easily influence the Somali itself. Okay. So that's exactly when the, you know, Abiy Ahmed came to power, he can, the entire, ch entire you know, politics of the, of, the, of the Horn of Africa has been changing now, right now. So there's a form of new alliance that are forming, whereby the Somali, Eritrea, right. Ethiopia, Djibouti, and, and Sudan, they're coming together as okay. the Horn of Africa. Okay, many thanks, Abdi Wahab. Before Professor Kagwanja has his input, let's just take a look at some developments emanating from South Africa, where the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, is addressing a rally to celebrate 107 years since Africa's oldest liberation movement, the African National Congress, ANC, was founded. Let's just cross over to Inanda in the north of Durban, where that event is taking place and listening. <laughs> Chairperson, I want to extend greetings to the National Executive Committee, members who are here, Amalu, a provincial executive committee, Abahola, who comrades, who cousin, Zigalala, Ola, all of them have a man since yesterday, but they said that Nova South Coast, Sassemendal, Afrikan
All right, this are live pictures um, from South Africa, Durban specifically, where President Cyril Ramaphosa is joining other South Africans to celebrate um, the ANC party 107 years specifically. But before we actually monitored the ongoing developments right there, we're talking about the state of Somalia. And you painted a clear picture that Somalia is actually a battleground in terms of foreign powers and trying to persuade or actually in place their influence in this particular country. Now, Professor Kagwanja, uh, needless to say, Somalia has come from a very long way to actually pick up its pieces. And we well know that it recently got international support. You know, the United States of America setting up diplomatic presence in the country, a permanent diplomatic presence. As you add up on what um, he actually mentioned, just give us a take of what the UN should actually be pondering right now as it looks for an individual to replace Nicholas? I think the, the journey um, to recovery in Somalia is on course. Uh, and I think uh, those of us who write on Somalia have indicated that uh, the, the, the course is irreversible. And that is the context in which one would conclude that Hasem did not spend time studying his tasks and responsibilities in Somalia. Because if he did, would have identified the following. One, that you need to recognize Somalia's sovereignty. And by Somalia, you mean Mogadishu. Because the moment you continue to reinforce the independence of units within Somalia, right, as if they exist outside Somalia itself, then you are actually an agent of fragmentation of the country you were sent to unite. Therefore, you need to be very sober and level-headed in your approach to regional states. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you don't recognize the, 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 the autonomy of the people and the people's right to decide in the grassroots. But you decide within a certain framework, and the framework is sovereignty and independence of the Somali state. The comment you have just shown there about Haysom talking about regions, can you imagine somebody commenting on Atlanta? or commenting on New York in the United States, advising the Americans on what they should do about them. Or somebody coming here to Kenya to tell us about how we're going to run with Meru County, Garissa County, or Kisumu County. That is total interference. And I don't know why Haysom could not uh, decipher that. Second, the UN needed to be sensitive to the geopolitical uh, spillovers into Somalia, where Somalia is a victim rather than a, a virain. Uh, and the spillover of this uh, geopolitics is at the regional level, where we are talking about the, trans the shifts and transformation taking place within the Horn of Africa region. The, 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 the approximation between Ethiopia and Eritrea, uh, the, the, the role of Kenya as a soft diplomacy uh, in the region, the, 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 the role of South Sudan, where Somalia also can play a role, uh, the, the, dif the differences between Djibouti and Eritrea, where Somalia has been helping. So it is now an understanding locally that we are, we are in the same ship, that we either sail together or we sink collectively. Okay. And Somalia is playing its part. The third is the spill of uh, politics as of the conclude. Middle East, yeah. as we conclude. Yeah. The Middle East, the blocks within the, the international Islamic community, where Qatar and Turkey are on the one side, and the UAE and Saudi Arabia on the other, and they are battling in Somalia for sovereignty. And also undermining the games that are coming. So finally, and this is what you, you said, and I think it's this, uh, uh, we can be saluted, that the international community as a whole has come to realize that supporting economic development in Somalia is a solution to long entrenched problems of human rights, marginalization, and so on. And therefore, when the World Bank and the IMF re I mean, resumed aiding Somalia, when the, the, the European Union resumed its aid to Somalia, when uh, Somalia is itself collecting taxes to pay for its security services and to pay its civil servants, we are beginning to see the comeback 
of the state okay. and the government. Okay. Hasten, Hasten, by his activism, is rolling all this back. Okay. All right. As I give you the chance to actually comment on that, final reviews are rather, I'm just being informed that there is a new president in Portland right now who's just actually assumed power. And we'll definitely get more information for the viewers back at home, but that is what we are learning right now. And perhaps your final comments on this particular issue touching on Somalia. The election of Puntadan today signifies Somalia can happen one man, one vote, 2020. Bundelan is a very stable state as we speak right now. Hirishabela is another stable state. Southwest state of Somalia is a very stable state. Can, they can conduct a one man, one vote. So 80% total population of Somalis today are in the, in the, in the, big, uh, the big towns, what they call the, 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 the urban areas. So they can easily conduct one man, one vote 2020, whereby they're going to decide who is going to be the next head of the state. Somalia, is, you cannot compare to Iraq. You cannot compare to what they call uh, you know, Afghanistan. You cannot compare to Syria. Yes. Somalia is more stable than Syria, more stable than Iraq, more stable than what they call the Afghanistan. Why the international community are not willing to help Somalis to conduct a one, 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 one vote so that they can, they can choose and elect their own leaders rather than selecting a hand picking what they call the, the leaders themselves. So, and I'm saying, what happened today in Garoe yeah. is a uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Somalia now is, as, as, as Professor Peter says, I put it, I cannot agree more than this. Somalia is on the way to recovery. And what they need, African brothers and sisters, to help the Somalis so that it's united and stable Somalia is good for the neighboring states. So the role of regional bodies also comes into question, yes? And as the East African community, have we been supporting Somalia um, as Sadka as well, have we been given proper um, support to this particular country that is trying to yeah. rise above all the conflict, not just within but without as well? Yes. For instance, Kenya is full of accommodation. Okay. If you look at the Somalis for the last 28 years, since the Somali collapsed, the large number of the refugees are coming to Kenya. Most of the Somali tycoons, they, they invest in the Kenya itself. Kenya okay. became the second home for, for Somalis. Yeah. So that if you look at this, the Kenya, it has, it, 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 in fact, it invests a lot in, so, in Somali community as well. So Somalis now, when, when, last time when Uhuru Kenyatta went to, the, to, to, to Mogadishu mm. and he gave a speech, look how the Somali euphoric about this speech. No, definitely. They, they, know, they know who is, who is helping them, who is not. Mm -hmm. Perhaps let's give Professor yeah. fi a final conclusion. Yeah. First and foremost, the African Union has done, is actually the savior of the Somali people and the Somali nation by virtue of restoring some form of security okay. with a lot of difficulties when the entire of the world, including the United Nations from 1995, neglected Somalia. And the African Union made a resolve that we are going in there with Amisom at least to protect the government. And from there, we can begin rec uh, reclaiming the, the Somali state. Okay. Two, the, East, the IGAD, uh, which is intergovernmental authority, of which uh, Somalia is a member, has very you know, progressively supported the Somali state and the Somali people and the Somali investors. Thirdly, the East African community, as uh, my colleague has mentioned here, uh, have essentially said, and, and this is what was said in March 2017, that Somalis are not refugees in Eastern Africa. They are citizens of the, of the region. Mm -hmm. They are legitimate citizens of the Horn of Africa region, of the Eastern Africa region. So it's no, it's no longer tenable to call a Somali in Kenya a, a refugee, refugee. Okay. because this region is one. And Thank therefore you. The, the, okay. uh, the attention now is to support the Somali people to get the skills to go and rebuild their country. Okay and to invest wherever they are. Well, many thanks. Professor Peter Kagwanja, a reform strategist and policy thinker on governance, security, and African affairs. Thank you for making time, as well as Abdi Wahab Sheikh Abdi Samad, who's a Horn of Africa analyst. Uh, of course, we were deliberating on the state of Somalia. The breaking news I just alluded earlier on is that Somalia's Puntland MPs have elected Somali businessman um, Said Abdullahi Denny as the Puntland's new president in a vote held at Garoe Town, the ex-member.
Minister of Hassan Sheikh Mohammed's government beat Assad Osman Abdullahi. Uh, Mr. Denny obtained 35 votes, uh, while his main rival, General Assad Osman, obtained 31 votes. That's the latest regarding the elections in Portland, the breakaway from Somalia. Many thanks, gentlemen, for making time.